Google Tag Manager Basics for Social Media Marketers. Hi, my name is Chris Mercer, and yes, I do go by Mercer, and I'm the co-founder here at MeasurementMarketing.io. I want to give a special welcome to those of you joining us from Social Media Examiner, an absolutely great place to learn about all things social media, and you're going to love today's topic. Here's what we're covering today. First, what tag managers are, why you would even want to use one, the benefits for social media marketers, and wait for it, creating your first tag. We're actually going to use a Facebook pixel for this. So if you're just starting out in Google Tag Manager, you will absolutely love this. Let's start with the pillars of measurement marketing. First, there's planning, and that is really figuring out what is important for you to measure, what sort of behaviors are happening on your site that you wanna make sure are tracked, what questions are you gonna ask of your information, of your measurements in order to make better marketing decisions. Once you have all of that, you're gonna start building out your measurement system, and that's using tools like Google Tag Manager, which you're actually gonna be able to see today. Once you have everything built out, you will then be able to pull reports, maybe using the built-in reports of Google Analytics or Facebook Analytics. And once you have those initial reports coming in, you can then begin to forecast what your near future might look like in terms of results. And then of course, you're going to measure against your forecasts and that will tell you where to optimize. So that's what measurement marketing is all about. Now today, of course, we're talking about Google Tag Manager basics specifically for social media marketers. And I like to start way at the beginning when it comes to Google Tag Manager with the origin story, why tag managers even became a thing. Well, back in the day, and think this is a big business problem that they were trying to solve. So let's say you're Best Buy and you have a marketing team, a marketing department, and you have an IT team, a developer uh, team, a department for IT. When the internet began to evolve and you had these young upstarts called Facebook and Google Ads, and at that time, Google AdWords, and all of these different pixels that were coming out for tracking purposes and being able to measure conversions. Well, of course, marketing loves those. You as a marketer, as a social media marketer, you want to be able to measure your results, but you had to go to the IT help desk to, in order to get them to put information on the site because they couldn't do it otherwise. You couldn't have access directly to the site. So, Marketing had to go to IT. That became a bottleneck because IT controlled all of the tracking. The course slowed everything down. Everybody had to wait. It was just horrible all the way around. Enter the tag manager. So a tag manager is a platform. It's a software. It's just a piece of script you put on your pages. And when you have that enabled, now both marketing and IT can work together with this tool. So the important part here is that you as a marketer can go into Tag Manager and control your tracking without having to rely on IT. Now, of course, you can still work with your developers on Tag Manager, but it becomes more and more powerful when the two departments work together, but you don't have to, especially when it comes to setting up something like Facebook Pixels, which you'll be seeing in just a few minutes. There are lots of tag managers that are out there. Here are some of the ones uh, that exist, most of which are paid. And of course, today we're talking about Google Tag Manager. This actually came out in 2012. Now, why GTM? Why Google Tag Manager? Number one, the cost. It's free for the vast majority of us. There are higher level paid versions that are available, but it's unlikely that you're going to need those in most cases. Market adoption. Ever since 2012, when this tool came out, Google has taken tag managers to a whole new level. Lots of people are using this tool. You probably know some other people and some of your peers and colleagues and other companies that are using this tool. There's lots of incredible integrations already a part of Google Tag Manager. And you're going to see this, not just the Google stuff that's integrated, but being able to pull in other third-party pixels like Facebook, like Hotjar, like all these other platforms that are out there. It's incredibly flexible. If you can imagine a behavior that's happening on your site that you want to be able to track, you can probably set it up and track it with Google Tag Manager. It's convenient. It doesn't take that much to learn. And with a little bit of practice, you can very, very quickly go in there and create a measurement for an idea that you had. So in this case, today we're talking about Facebook pixels. You're going to see just how fast it is to be able to set that up. And of course, independence. We talked about this earlier, where you as a marketer can independently go into your Google Tag Manager. And remember, Google Tag Manager isn't made for IT, though it can be used for IT. Its primary audience is marketers. That's who they want back there. So you can get into Google Tag Manager and have the independence to set up whatever tracking you need with whatever platform that you want to be tracking. 
Now let's talk quickly about Google Tag Manager versus Google Analytics because there is a little bit of confusion over the difference between these two. Remember, they are completely separate platforms, just like Google has Google Calendar and Google Gmail. They have Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. They're separate tools. The way I like to think about this is Google Tag Manager tracks behavior. That's what it's there for. It is there to set up and be aware of all the different behaviors that are happening on the page, whereas Google Analytics is the platform that stores the behavior. So the way to think about this visually might be something like this, where Google Tag Manager tracks everything and then sends the information over to Google Analytics for storage. But of course, remember, it's not just Google Analytics. It's going to also send information to Facebook. It can send information to Google Ads if that's a platform that you use. It could also set up tracking and send information to Hotjar if you're using that for recordings and uh, scroll or heat maps. And maybe you use PayPal and you want to use their tracking system as well. You can set up the tracking to go into PayPal. So Google Tag Manager is this one central platform that's able to send out all sorts of information around tracking and measurement to a lot of different platforms. Now, what can GTM track? It's one word really, behaviors. But think about all those different behaviors that are happening on your site. Page views, kind of an obvious one, but when somebody loads up a page, that's a behavior. But also think about the clicks that are happening on that page. Think about scrolling, how people are scrolling up and down on the pages. You can measure that with Google Tag Manager. Video interaction, if you've got a video that's on your page and you wanted to know how many people are clicking play on that video or watching that video for a certain period of time or even a certain percentage, you can measure that. Time on page, did they spend 30 seconds, 45 seconds, five minutes? You can measure that. And there's just about anything else that you can imagine that's a behavior you can measure with Google Tag Manager. Let's talk about creating an account and setting up your first container. Now, again, we're gonna jump in. I love doing this. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this on our little demo here. So when you go into Tag Manager, and again, you're just gonna to go to tagmanager.google.com. It's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. If you already have accounts, you can just uh, click where it says create an account, and I'm gonna show you where that is real quick. So if you come into your container and already has some stuff and you wanna set up a new one, just click on where it says create an account, and you'll come to this page. Now, the account, is really the company. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna say measurementmarketing.io because that is our company. And we're going to share data just to help the product along. And then we're gonna set up the container. Now the container is really the website and we've already set up a demo account uh, on the website here. So we're gonna say measurementmarketing.io-demo. That's what I'm gonna call it. Now this is a web container. This is a website. And for the vast majority of you watching this, that's what you're gonna do as well. But just know that you can set up Tag Manager for iOS apps, Android apps, and even AMP pages. We're gonna click on web and click on create. Once we read our terms of service, we are then going to agree to those. And voila, that's it. We've now set up our account and our container. Now, the important part here is to follow these directions. This is where you might need your developer uh, to help you out a little bit, but there are plugins if you're using WordPress sites that do this. There's lots of different integrations for Tag Manager nowadays. So all you need to do is make sure that this code uh, essentially gets on the pages. Just follow the directions for this and it'll help you out. Um, I've actually already got a site that will do that. So in this case, this container is this ID, by the way. So if anybody is asking for your container ID, that's where you find it, right in here. So uh, we've already got this set up and I'm gonna show you where that is now. And here it is in all of its glory. So we've got a nice little demo site that we can check out. Um, now we are going to be setting up our Facebook pixel, but before we do that, you kind of got to know your way around, right? All these different pieces and parts that are in Google Tag Manager. Because this is the basics, I wanna talk about two primary ones. It is the most important ones. The first are the tags. Obviously, it's kind of where it gets its name from. Pretty important thing. So let's go in and we're gonna take a look at the tags in Google Tag Manager. So when you click here, you'll notice on this little left-hand navigation, we're gonna click where it says tags. In the beginning, there are none. But I wanna show you where they are. So we're gonna click on new and we're gonna click anywhere in this box, or you can, of course, click the little pencil icon. But when you do that, you see all of the different tag types that are available to you. So you've got Google Analytics, you've got Ads, uh, Floodlight, Conversion Linkers, Google Optimize for split testing, Google Surveys. You also have all these third-party tags that are down here. And speaking of social media, I mean, look at this. You've got, if I can find it, we've got, uh, we talked about Hotjar already, of course, but LinkedIn. 
So you've got your LinkedIn tags. You've got, I believe, Twitter's even in here. So we can come down and you can set up your Twitter uh, conversion tracking. So there's Twitter. So lots of different things that are already built in and available to you as a social media marketer. But what if it's not? What if there isn't something like Facebook, for example? In that case, you can use custom HTML where you basically copy and paste the scripts in. And this is the one I'm gonna show you today. So these are the easiest ones to set up. There's always these built-ins that are available. And if you have these as an option, use these because they are the best ones to use. But if you don't have those, you can always use custom HTML, and that's exactly what we're gonna to do today with our Facebook pixel. So tags, really when it comes down to it, they are the what, is what you want to do. So do I want Google Analytics to know about something? Then I need to set up a tag. If I want Facebook, if that's my what, like I want Facebook to understand that somebody's on the page and to load a page view, I would use the custom HTML tag. If I want Hotjar to know or Crazy Egg to know that somebody's on the page, I could use any of these different built-in tags for them. So that's the tags part of this, right? Tags are all about the what. What do you want Google Tag Manager to do? Do you want it to tell Facebook something's happening or Google Analytics or Hotjar or Twitter or LinkedIn or uh, Bing, any of those? The next thing I wanna talk about, the next part here is triggers. So triggers are all about the when. Let me show you exactly what those look like. So these are the tags. We're gonna get out of our tags here and we're gonna go into triggers right underneath tags. Now, when you go to triggers, again, nothing's here because it's a brand new container, but when you click on new, you see all the different triggers. Again, I'm just gonna click anywhere in the middle. We've got when a page loads, these are different sort of stages of that, but when the page loads, I've got different clicks. So whether this is actually every time the mouse button presses down, and this is just when there's hyperlinks, I've got all sorts of engagement. So when certain elements come into view in the browser, when a form is submitted, when scrolling happens, when somebody's checking out a YouTube video. Um, and then of course, we talked about how you can expand this kind of to whatever your imagination is. And that's really what custom events are for. Um, and you also have timers. We talked about timers being able to track time on page. So there's lots of different whens that you can set up with your triggers. That's all the trigger is, is when a certain behavior happens, then do this, okay? So that's how you wanna think about triggers. And again, just to sort of recap this, triggers are the when Google Tag Manager should do what you want it to do, right? So to recap, tags are the what and triggers are the when. And when you understand those two main parts of Google Tag Manager, it makes the tool so much simpler to use. All right, to the moment we are all here for, let's set up our Facebook pixel using Google Tag Manager. First step, of course, is grabbing that pixel. So you're just gonna go into your business.facebook.com account and you're going to go into your pixel settings, grab your details, and you can just copy and paste this little script of codes. This is where you're gonna find your pixel uh, code for Facebook again in the business.facebook account and you're gonna grab and just copy and paste what's there. So we're gonna copy it out and once you have it copied out, and I'm actually going to show this to you here, we're going to set up our first tag. So let's go into Google Tag Manager. Remember, we're gonna go into tags, why? Because this is the what that we're setting up. We're setting up what we want Tag Manager to do, and in this case, we want it to set up a Facebook page view pixel. We want to tell Facebook that somebody's on the page. So we're gonna click on new tag, and then anywhere in the block. And of course we don't see an actual built-in tag that's available for Facebook, at least not yet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to custom HTML. So I'm gonna click on that, and then it brings up this little empty block. So all we do is we paste in the code that we previously copied. Remember we talked in the beginning, it was just gonna be copying and pasting the, the pixel code. That's it, we're gonna come in here. We've copied that code out. And this is the course for our account. So your account's gonna be different. And the way that this script works, you have all this information that sort of tells Facebook, hey, get ready for information coming down. It's gonna say, here's the account number. I want you to initialize the account number. And then here's the first event that I want you to record, which is a page view. And that's how this works. This tells Facebook, sort of knocks on the mothership and says, hey, Facebook, somebody's on the page. This is the account information I want you to store this on. Stand by for more details as they come through. So that's how this works. So now that we have the what, we've got our tag set up. That's really it. I mean, it's deceptively simple, but all you did was just copy and paste. Didn't really change anything else. Now that we have that pasted in, our what is done. But what's the other part we talked about earlier? Remember, tags and triggers. You've got to tell it when. We need to tell Tag Manager when do we want it to tell Facebook 
that somebody's on the page. So in this case, when you click on triggers, you're going to see this built in. This exists for all of you. So when you start a brand new account, you will see this one. This is the all pages trigger, and this fires whenever the page loads. So as long as the page has tag manager on it, when that tag manager script loads, it will automatically fire this tag. That's what this does. So let's review. We've got our tag, which is the what, right? What we want tag manager to do in this case, to go tell Facebook that get ready for information and here's the account. And then of course the page view event that happened. And then there's the when, which is all pages. Whenever the pages load, I want you to tell Facebook that somebody is on the page. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And I like using little naming conventions here. So we're going to say FB for Facebook, in this case, a page view. Okay. So we can see down here, that is a page view pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And now that we have our very first tag set up, what we're going to do next is preview it just to make sure it's working. This is a great feature of Google Tag Manager. So I'm going to click where it says preview and you're going to see a nice little orange bar pop up. That's how we know that we are in preview mode. And then I'm going to go into my demo site. So as I do that, I'm going to refresh the page and watch what happens here. If I do that, I have this nice big giant window that pops up at the bottom. This shows me kind of the behind the scenes of Google Tag Manager. Now, nobody else sees this, just me, because I'm in preview mode. So here I can instantly see tags already firing Facebook page view, perfect. Now I know that Google Tag Manager has officially fired my Facebook pixel. Now, how do I know that Facebook is actually getting that information? There's a fantastic extension you can use called Facebook Pixel Helper. I'm going to click on that so you can see it up here. So the Facebook Pixel Helper, you can just Google this to find it. Uh, you install it on Chrome or whatever browser you're using, and it tells you Facebook's perspective of the truth. In this case, this is Facebook saying, yes, I've got information that shows this account number is storing this event of the page view. So now I know that Tag Manager sent everything over and Facebook actually received it. My final, final step, I'm going to leave preview. So we do that. My final, final step is to actually publish. And this is kind of like WordPress. If you're familiar with WordPress, where you can create a draft, but you don't actually publish it live to the world. Um, and if you want them to see it, you have to publish it. It's like that here as well. So we're going to go to submit. And when you click on submit, you see what says publish and create a version. That's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to leave a little descriptive thing. So we say uh, created the Facebook page view. That's just to let everybody else know in the container, even myself later on, if I'm coming back and looking at this, what I did here. So a little description, a little breadcrumb, and then we click on publish. And now that we have done that, now that we have published the container, it drops us in our little versions. Uh, again, great feature of Google Tag Manager, kind of keeps backups of everything. But if I go to my workspace, you'll see workspace changes here, show zero, that means everything's up to date right? Everything's completely up to date. And if I go to my tags, you'll see there's my Facebook page view tag. And if I start clicking around the different parts of my site, now I'm not in preview anymore, which is why that window went away. But if I start clicking around the different parts of my site, I can still see it working by going to Facebook pixel helper and going up. Oh, there it is. It's saying it received the page view. And again, there's the account that's coming through. So I know the account number is right. And I know the fact that Facebook is saying, yes, I actually have the page view information stored. So that's really it. That's your first tag automatically set up. So here are your next steps to sort of recap this whole thing on the basics of GTM, of Google Tag Manager. First, go and create your GTM account if you haven't done so already. You want to go to tagmanager.google.com to do that. Then you want to create your container. Remember, there's the account, which is kind of like the company, and then there's the container for the website itself. So you'd set up the container and install that script and get it up and running, whether you do that through a plugin or whether you get a little bit of help from your developer to put that script on the pages of your site. And then once the container is on your site and you've got Google Tag Manager there, set up your Facebook pixel. Again, you saw how fast and easy that was. Go into Facebook, copy out your pixel, go into Tag Manager, paste it in as a custom HTML tag, and then you would sign it the all pages trigger. So the what is go tell Facebook that somebody's on the page. The when is do it every single time the page loads, which is the all pages trigger. And that's it. Your Facebook pixel is completely set up and you've officially started using Google Tag Manager. So that's it. You've officially started using Google Tag Manager and you now know the basics from a social media marketing perspective. Because remember, if you can do this with Facebook, you can do it with Twitter, you can do it with LinkedIn, you can do it with all sorts of tracking and measurement from your social media marketing efforts. So go have fun with this. Thank you again for those of you joining us from Social Media Examiner. We love having you here. And my name again is Mercer. I am over at measurementmarketing.io. If you have any questions, you can find me there. Thanks again for watching. We will see you on another video soon.